business succession planning. In particular, what the new opportunity is, why you might do want to do reviews of operating, existing operating agreements, and how your clients may benefit from this. So, there are three reasons we're going to focus on. Taxes, first of all, for business owners to exit during lifetime, we might be able to get them from the 20% capital gains rate to 15 if they're going to sell. We also might be able to get a step up in basis in ways that were not previously possible on their existing buy-sell arrangements. We can reduce risk by insuring certain events that otherwise were not insured or underinsured um, and reduce the magnitude of certain events. And finally, control. The time to talk about these things is not um, in the event of a triggering event. Let's say one of the partners wants to retire now and the language is written such that the valuation methodology isn't ideal. You want to talk about these things in advance because that person would be over the barrel in that instance. So. Um, some of the things we're going to talk about is funding techniques and sure, uh, the purchase techniques. Uh, funding techniques, there you know, you oftentimes will see in an operating agreement installment sale payments. That's not ideal. Oftentimes, you wouldn't want your spouse to necessarily be a, uh, trying to, to litigate something uh, years later if the pay, if business wasn't as good and somehow one person wanted to reduce the payment structure. Uh, better buy it up front if you could. Uh, borrowing funds is not ideal. Many business owners have never really been in a lot of debt before, and it's uncomfortable for them. Uh, sinking funds, obviously taking fun, funds to set aside in good operating years for an eventuality that might not happen, let's say a death event as a trigger, is not ideal either. Life insurance is ideal, particularly for the death event, which is why it's you know pennies on the dollar, and so that's why we see it so often used for bio reasons. We can also use life insurance as a, as a, partly as a sinking fund. Some term insurance and some permanent oftentimes is used uh, for a bio during lifetime, not just death, and it'd be tax-free. Um, there's three primary uh, techniques I'm going to cover today. Entity purchase, cross-purchase, and insurance-only LLCs as comparison. The other ones are really versions of these three anyway. So a cross-purchase plan is, uh, there's two plans I mentioned. A cross-purchase is the first one. That's where you have shareholders owning um, insurance policies on each other to fund the buyout. Uh, if you have, in this example, you have three shareholders, so you need six policies to, essentially to buy each other, one deceased shareholder out. Um, the benefit of that type of plan is you get a step up in basis for the shares you purchased because you're using your own personal dollars, not corporate dollars. Um, the downside is that there's no corporate oversight, so somebody might not be making the premium payments and the plan falls apart then, for example, unless they do have some kind of mandated check-in. Uh, another option is the stock redemption plan. You see, that I think this is the one when you see usually in, in operating agreements and buy-sell arrangements. That's where the corporation owns the insurance policy. So in this example, three shareholders, you only have one policy on each other. That's the benefit of this plan, the simplicity of the administration. One policy on each shareholder, this corporation buys out the shares of the deceased shareholder and makes the other two shareholders whole by default. This plan does not get a step up in basis though. So there's a third option, which gets, gives you the benefit of ease administration and the step up in benefit. So it gets the best of both worlds. And that's the insurance only LLC. So in this example here, we're gonna have an, a parent company set up an insurance only LLC to hold only just the life insurance to fund the, the arrangement. The cash contributions will be equal to the premiums. The premiums would be paid to the insurance company. The insurance company would pay the death benefit to the insurance only LLC to the extent somebody passes away, obviously. Um, the cash then would be used to purchase the shares of the, of the deceased. And the, those shares would then be um, given to the living shareholders. Again, the benefit of this is that you get the step up in basis and the ease of administration in the sense you get one policy each, it's paid by the corporation and it's transparent. So if you like this, this topic and you want to discuss how to, how to market this or how you take advantage of this or how to review operating agreements, CBS brokers can help you with that. So here's an example of a real, of a real um, a shareholder uh, operating agreement review. We look for a transference, the ability to own uh, shares and trust or life insurance policies and trust or funding and trust. Um, we look for uh, what happens at the death trigger, what happens at disability triggers, valuation methodology. Obviously, these businesses may have been set up years ago and never been looked at again in terms of valuation methodology for funding the plan. Um, obviously, things could change now. They, and uh, we want to look at the tax basis. We look at bankruptcy, adding shareholders, removing shareholders, retirement. Some of these things will be in some of these operating agreements. Some won't. Some may want to add these things and so forth. Uh, and finally, um, I usually show a visual of what the, of the type they have. And this is an example, an empty purchase with cross purchase. So not always do you see one type. Sometimes you'll see a, a, a stock redemption plan, which if they fail to act, the corporation fails to buy it, the, the individual shareholders have the option to buy it, and so forth. And that's what this is showing. So anyway, if you have a, 
If you have a, a business client uh, that you'd like to, to look at the process of reviewing the existing operating agreements and see what opportunity there is to improve the client situation or market, oftentimes business bankers have these operating agreements. They just need them for the legal, legal signatories on a loan. So it'd be good to market to business bankers, for example. Go ahead and give me a call at this number here or email me or look us up on the website.